Mortis Ghosts 2008 Hit Off is an important game in regards to internet culture and gaming as a whole. It became Tumblr's sixth most reblog game of 2013, inspired Undertale and probably some other RPG Maker games, and is, at least in my opinion, the third most important RPG Maker game in terms of release, right next to Corpse Party and Yumi Nikki. But since this is more of an actual RPG instead of the modern day depression fests or walking simulators, that means that Off's main character, the Batter, is going to be the best party member in terms of damage and you know skills, but what if we reduced him to just the? As we ask the question, can you beat Off with only the add-ons? Same rules as the previous challenges. I can't use the batter for direct damage unless it's with an item, and I can only use his healing skills. But compared to our last challenges, at least we have a full party this time. And with all that out of the way, let's get to it. We start off by telling the game my name and credit card information before we're being introduced to our meat puppet known as the batter, and are given the task to find the judge for more information. Oh, there he is. He asks us to follow, gives us a skippable tutorial purely for my benefit since it's, well, been a while since I've actually played this game, and then lets us add some puzzles. The solution is simple, touch the block in correlation to the numbers of the wall, then touch them in order, assuming the order is 1 to 4 on top, and then 5 to 8 on the bottom. We then touch the next group using the code in the outer room and are sent to zone 1. We take a tram, get told some story shit, and are told to go down a mine to find a ghost. Luckily, there's no ghost here, but our first add-on, known as Add-on Alpha. Alpha's main job is damage and status effects, although you won't really need the status effect moves, as in my experience, they rarely proc, even at all. We move to the next area, go into another set of orple coloured mines, and are quickly surrounded by a group of spectres, and are introduced to Off's battle theme, Pepper Stick. If you haven't listened to Off's soundtrack by now, I'd highly recommend it, it's full of top tier bobs. But this fight allows us to see what the Alpha is capable of, which considering we're basically down a party member, they're doing quite well. We go through the mines and find some loot, make our way to the other side and are given yet another lore dump. All you need to know is that the world is comprised of four elements. Smoke, which is gathered from the mines to make the breathable air. Metal, which is gathered from the cows to make the ground and tools. Plastic, which makes up the oceans. And meat, which is, well, meat. It's what people eat. We quickly deal with the spectres in the cow sheds before we see our first guardian, named Dedan. He's like a foul-mouthed version of Nemesis. But, since he doesn't know we're here, we skedaddle our way back to the smoke mines and begin stumbling through the darkness before we find Zachary, our humble items merchant and one of the first Tumblr sexy men. We buy some upgrades before stumbling into the lobby for an office building. Good news, we know where the spectres are coming from, and that's the postal room. Bad news, no one knows which floor the postal room is on, and there's 99,999 floors. Luckily, the judge is chilling on the roof and gives us some sound advice. On the ground floor is a room where everyone has the right answer, and to choose the lower case. Talking to everyone multiple times reveals that their dialogue changes with every interaction, except the bottom right room, and also one other guy, which leads us to a room with some Abaddon meat, a fight with some spectres, and a luck ticket, so more healing is always good. Using the actual number, we make our way through the postal room and up to the director's office, where we see Dedan getting harassed by some spectres, and he kindly tells us to bugger off. <laughs> off. But before some forces beyond our comprehension tells us that the trams now stop at Alma, which we quickly head off to. When we get there, we're stopped by yet another puzzle. This one, we have to analyse three posters and answer questions about them. I tried this at least three times. First was a quick scan, third was writing everything down, and the final one was looking at a guide because I swore I was right. Short note, I missed like one little text right in the first one. It was really stupid of me, but hey, you know. We have the guide in case we need help. Anyway, we make our way to the meat waterfalls of Alma, get two back-to-back -back puzzles before we reach Deda, who is not pleased with seeing us. The fight went pretty well, even if it took me too long to actually complete it. I did end up running out of SP by the end of it though, which shows us that we need an adequate supply of silver flesh to deal enough damage and heal out the attacks. But other than being able to afflict the status of Snore Me Me Me, the fight was pretty easy. 
Now zone 1 is purified, and we get a sneak peek at Hugo. We teleport to the second zone, known as Bismarck, a more residential area compared to the mains and offices of Zone 1. I have a look around, buying a book page from one of the Elson and finding Zachary in the mall, who now has silver flesh in his stock. I make my way to the library, put pages into books and encounter Yafet, the guardian of the second zone, who we quickly engage with in combat. Yafet easily goes down, before retreating and leaving us with our second party member and debuff healer, Adon Omega. I then head to the mall, get lost for a few seconds, before I find a switch to turn on a pedalo that leads to the amusement park. When we get there, we have to play a game where we take turns popping a balloon until the other person can only pop the last one. It takes me a while because I have exactly one brain cell and it bounces around my skull like a Windows screensaver. But for our troubles, we fight the game's master, granting us a tie that will give us access into Bismarck's residential area. We then take a pedal or ride to allow us access to the roller coaster, where we have a ride with the Zack Man and get access to his office, giving us some Zodiac Orbs to buff at Omega. Oh, I forgot to mention I got Zodiac Orbs back in the smoke mines, but don't worry, I'll mention them now so you're not confused. With the necktie in hand, we make our way to the residential area, where Yafet is letting the spectres harass the locals. We then have to deal with all of them before the timer runs out, and don't worry, we've been given enough time to deal with them, and just remember it's the ones on the outside, there's no spectres inside. We were then told to leave because a baseball bag is in fact a deadly weapon, and the judge tells us that his brother Valerie is taken over by something calling them Yafet. Hmm, I wonder who. We haul ass up to the library and come face to face with the imposter cat, where the bird Valerie once ate began crawling out of his mouth. And we do the obvious thing, beating the shit out of Pablo's brother right in front of him, before Phoenix busts forth and we have to fight him. Yafet's fight was a bit the same as Dead Ends, just use the batter's healing and fight with the add-ons. But the only thing I'll bring up is that Yafet constantly applies poison, which despite being Omega's specialty, it takes around two uses of the cure move to actually remove it. Cat and the bird are dead, we get yet another sneak peek at Hugo, and we make our way to the sugar factories of Vesper, also known as Zone 3. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention sugar. It's the secret element, and what does it do? Yeah, it's... That's not very subtle, is it? We make our way through the cafeteria, navigating the floor tiles with a piece of paper we found in the first room, until we find Zachary, who's taking the judge's role for the foreseeable future. He tells us to search the other rooms regarding the Spectre situation, and when we do, we find our final add-on, Epsilon. Epsilon acts as the buffer, which in all honesty isn't that noticeable, but they have an attack that attacks multiple targets at once, so that's pretty good. We don't find out much information in the other room, so we head to Area 2 with Zachary, finding out that the Elson don't seem threatened by the Spectres, even going so far as to fight back against them. So we take this information back to Zachary, who tells us to head to the next area to find out more about it. We take part in a sick skydiving minigame before we land and find out that the sugar is made up from ground up corpses. Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. Afterwards, we head on the tram with Zachary, beat up a guy that stopped it, head to area 4 and do a fourth wall breaking controller puzzle that requires us to find a text document in the game's files. We then find Enoch, get into a fight with him, realising he's too thick for our attacks and run away like a bitch back to the tram. He catches up, going even larger and forcing us into combat. The fight is what you expect, but now with even more poison. But we manage to get through it, purifying zone 3 and moving us on to the final zone, simply known as the Rim. But after heading for the zones to stock up on items, we head into the room, and onto the final area. Chapter 5 involved us fighting some bears, going through some rooms, fighting some ghosts, and getting some backstory stuff. Chapters 4 involved us interacting with the zone guardians, seemingly before all the zones were created. We gave Dead on a calendar page, we gave Jafet a book, and he helped Enoch out of a hole in the ground. We then talked to them in the shack Dead on was in, and they'll tell us how they'll create a new world and hang out as we, supposedly Hugo, waits for his mother to return. We then head to chapter 3 to solve a puzzle with a playing card, give the code to a giant Elson, put a ball into a hole, do another block puzzle and head on to chapter 2. 
Chapter 2 looks like the previous rooms, but we only have one option, which is to read a comic known as Panic at Ballville. The main character, Boxer, is chilling and relaxing under the pure white board of Ballville before the evil villain Ballman tells him that he's cloned himself and also kidnapped Boxer's girlfriend, before we're thrust into a side scroll. I press the escape key only for my fears to be realised. We're gonna have to fight something, aren't we? I managed to narrowly avoid all the Ballman clones before I'm forced into a fight with an army of them. There's no way to avoid this fight, no way to flee, which means I'm forced to use an attack, meaning that I failed to run. But we're so close to the end that there's no point in leaving now. I attack all of them, the batter gains sentience and comments on the run as a whole, before we finally end up in the last place before the final boss. I talk to Zachary, buy some upgrades as well as the final item required to get the true ender, and make our way back to Zone Zero to fight Sukhna. Her fight took me 10 minutes, which is honestly the longest fight I've ever done in an RPG Maker game. It's insane. But we defeat her, get the Ares card from Zachary, and head back to the Rim to fight the Queen, who has her own set of add-ons, named Delta, Epsilon, and Sigma. But her add-ons are no match for mine, so we kill our possible wife before we kill our possible child. We then head to the Switch before the judge stops us and asks us why I did this. We then quickly beat the shit out of him for questioning my status as a challenge runner, for pulling the lever, turning the world off, and proving no, you cannot be off with only add-ons. It was a breath of fresh air to finally play this after so long, and it really does hold up to the test of time. Although I do feel like this challenge is way easier compared to the Buckets only one, due to off's combat being way more quicker. Who knows, I may even revisit the game and do a batter only run, but only time will tell. Still, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm Buck Taylor, and thank you for watching. Oh, yeah, and there's some about monkeys. I don't know, I wasn't paying attention.